Oh, by the way, I'm gonna share my screen during the panel if you need to like maximize that or something. That's I can do that. Oh, Just thought of it now. I, I love Peabot's design. He's cool. Yeah, it's really cool. I especially love this art by uh, Chromatic. Oh, it's super good. Uh, it's dope. Shout out. Yeah, this was for the the Rumble reveal uh, jam. I don't remember if this one won anything, but I just think it's dope. At least it got front paged. Oh yeah, well yeah. I mean, that, that, one way to assure yourself to get front paged is to. Well, actually, it's not even true anymore. It used to be I would hide little Tankman in my thumbnails, and then a mod would see it in the art thumbnail and be like, "Oh, Tankman, yes!" And then I'd get front paged. That was my strategy. <laughs> When I was competing with people, yeah, I was competing with people like Matt Lopes, who always gets front page because he's fantastic and nobody can match his style. Uh, and I was like, that's my strategy is I'll just put little tank men in Newgrounds references and then they'll have to front page me. But that doesn't work anymore just because of the sheer volume of people who have come year after year since I started. Yeah. Doesn't work anymore. There's too many fucking posers around here cramping our style. Nah, dude, I love Newgrounds I and everybody in it. I, I feel bad for people who act ashamed that, like, Friday Night Funkin' brought them back to Newgrounds. Like, people who yeah, go, I Actually, I had an account before then, so, you know, I really I really enjoyed it before. It's like, don't be embarrassed. It's awesome. Like, I'm I'm glad that's what brought you. Like, you don't have to yeah, change the truth. Sure. I, nope, I'm not going to go, Oh, you're not a real fan. <laughs> Peasant. No, I'm going to do that because I'm level 51 and you're goddamn nothing. You're nothing! That's my proof that I've been here. I think I'm like level like 19 or something. I'm a scrub. I'm a little scrub. I don't interact with the site enough. I've, I've been trying to force myself to do that. Like, I'll, I'll be on the site, but I don't like interact. I don't like, I don't leave enough comments or likes or like, I don't, I don't do That sounds like that. Lewis. The guy's been on since like 2002 and he's still like level 14. Yeah, I just, I don't, I don't interact 19. enough. Just mathematically, it says Lewis doesn't rate shit. <laughs> Level 19 makes you a scrub. I'm like level 17. I don't even know what I am. You should holy cow, can you check what my level is quick before I can, I can people check dox it. I can check me. it. People dox me. Uh, what? It's a, it's a quick before people dox me. Oh. Alright, guys, it's 11 15. We should just cancel today's thing and just play Baldur's Gate on stream. I mean, uh, dude, I freaking really love Baldur's Gate. <laughs> I would. Okay. Me too. Let's just make a campaign, Here. a three-person campaign right now and play for the next Yeah, let's go. Okay, I'm I can't. I can't, now. dude. I can't start another campaign. <laughs> There's. I'm already doing a quad and a duo. It's just... Any, you're level 10. Thing. Oh my god, I am. That's crazy. That's, That's what I mean. That's pretty sad. Granted, this is a newer account because I was on before. But like, um... Uh, but yeah, that's funny. Level 10 is funny. I have to interact more. I'm a, I'm a loser. All right, now shut Great. your mouth. All uh, right. It's time. But feel free, if there's questions in the chat, feel free to just, like, yeah. prompt them to me. Uh, you can interrupt me at any time, and I'll just resume like it was nothing. Because be I'm that amazing. All right, everyone enjoy the problem with Peabot. Welcome to the problem with Peabot. First of all, I just want to wish everybody a happy robot day. Happy robot day, everyone. It's a lovely day. It was started by Mind Chamber uh, 16,000 years ago. And to this day, we celebrate robots like the ones he created, like Peabot and Mbot and uh, the other bot. And Dbot and Gbot. Don't forget Gbot. He's always pinging you to renew your supporter status subscription. Always and forever. In fact, he won't leave my friend Emmyzip alone. And it's it, it, honestly, can we talk about the problem with Gbot real quick? That guy is a creep. He only comes for money only he never asks like how are you doing you know what's up hey how's the dog how's the life how's the wife it's always where's my 299 like i'm some whore anyway this is a panel that i'm calling the problem with peabot oh clickbait 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 my name is brandon i go by brandy buizel on sites like newgrounds uh i'm currently hosting the live action jam which you've probably seen on the front page uh yeah i make stuff uh, sometimes for money, but I make stuff all the time. So the problem with Peabot, just to give you a brief summary, is we have this thing on Newgrounds called Daily Awards. We love them. Daily Awards are awesome. It's a great way to show who did the best each day, every single day. It shows the top five creations in any category. That's movies and games, sometimes audio. Yeah, audio can actually win the award. It's very rare, but you need enough votes. And then Peabot 
He just calculates and tallies the results of all the reviews and scores of what was published that day, and he spits out the top five, and it usually comes to major disappointment. And that's because we get shit like lewd thirst traps, straight up porn when it shouldn't be there, we get crappy content, we get shit by somebody who has 100,000 follows that's basically like they just press record on their phone for three minutes, uh, move some shit around in Photoshop, and then hit publish. And then, you know, because they have 100,000 people behind them, it just ends up a daily first because... Oh, and you're like, hey, that sucks. Why does Peabot do that to me? No, 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 no. The problem's you, okay? The problem's not with Peabot. He's a goddamn calculator. He ain't doing shit, okay? Freaking Peabot does math. He just goes, a uh, review score? Uh, views? Amount of reviews? Good. And he just tallies it for us. The problem is, Newgrounds is a curated site. All the content is curated. It's no algorithm, but we're the ones who curate it. And you're doing a shitty job. Like, what? What did you want me to do? Problem with Peabot. You want me to prosecute a calculator? On robot day? I'm gonna get fleeced. Now, for those of you who aren't educated in this shit, and don't mind if the background uh, flops between my whatever my desktop wallpaper is, because I have tabs and tabs open. But this problem started with a little lady called Maxine. If you're not familiar with Maxine, this was a little thing that happened in 2018, where this won daily first, and me and Ninja Muffin were super pissed. Here it is. You see the goddamn problem? Do you see the goddamn problem I have with this? This is what you guys, yeah you, this is what you voted for. In fact, this rating is much lower than it was the day of. I have screenshots of it. It had a 4.9. My god. God! Let, let me just... What is... Anyway, so yeah, the problem is you guys. You're, you're the problem, you're doing a bad job. Okay, great. Well, how can we fix it? How can we do a better job? Um, well, that's what I'm going to talk to you about, stupid. But, there was a point that was made on Twitter by Phantom Arcade when me and Ninja Muffin were complaining about this originally in 2018. He said... Well, Newgrounds is, well, Peabot is just a calculator. You know, Newgrounds is a site that puts the stuff that people want to see at the forefront. So I'm just like, yeah, that's a great point. What's the solution to that, you know? And the solution is just, you got to review stuff lower. I know that sounds mean, but hear me out. By the end of this, you'll be a believer. You'll be convinced that you should rate your content lower. Not necessarily your own content, but all content on the site. It's just, it's a fault of the community. It's two main problems here when we get stuff like this in Daily First. It's one, the fault of the community, but two, it's also a fault of the system. And I'll get into that. It's not a lot of the system's fault, but it's slightly a bit of a fault of the system. You know, it's not the system's fault that everybody's horny as shit for no reason. You know? That's not their problem. And it's not, like, the creator's fault either. When you have creators who have, like, hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands of fans... Who are at a clear advantage because, you know, if you like that creator, you're going to give him a five. You want to say, I, I love the work you did. But, you know, that doesn't quite make sense. Is all of the work they do a five? Why do we feel that we have to give everyone at least a four to feel like we're, we're saying good job? We're training ourselves. Listen, the average score on art pages today is ridiculously high. I want to show you a couple different uh, pieces I created. Here's here's an art piece I created way back in uh, 2017. Digital painting it took me a dozen hours. I worked really hard on it. It got some nice reviews. I felt like I deserved a five. You know, I felt like I did a good job. I don't even post sh stuff on Newgrounds if I don't think it's at least worth a three. Here's another example. That last one, it got a 4.7. This one got a 4.7. I felt like I did a really good job on this. I felt like I worked really hard on this loop. It took some time. And I was feeling pretty proud of myself. So that's worth a 5. And I get a 4.7. You 
Now here's the problem. Here's a little doodle I did. It took me about 12 minutes. I posted it. It's got about the same amount of favorites, same amount of views. It's got almost a 4.4. Why is the disparity between the best of our work, the average, and our worst work, why does the disparity have to be everything within 4.0? 0.3 of a difference? We have a scale with 11 levels. We can vote anything from zero to five stars with half stars in between. Why are we only using fours and fives? I just, I understand it. <laughs> it just, it makes me a little bit flabbergasted, quite frankly. But I digress. <laughs> I want to talk to you about A-rated submissions first. Sometimes content slips through on Peabot, and a submission will get rated daily first, or any of the daily top five. And then the submission will be viewed by a moderator and they go, oh, shit, that shouldn't have slipped in. And an A-rated submission will have won the award. Now, A-rated submissions can't win the daily awards, but an M-rated submission can. So we assume, you know, some people are sneaking in their M-rated submissions, you know, sneaking it in and not changing it to A because they're being malicious or something. And then a mod has to fix it. But now it's taken that daily award away from somebody who might have really deserved it. Daily awards make us feel good. Like it's it's a little shiny thing that pops up and it reminds you, hey, you did a good job. I love daily awards. I agree and it makes me happy. I collect them and I, I treasure them. It makes me feel like I did a good job in addition. It's like the site saying I did a good job as well as the reviews by people saying I did a good job. You know, it's acknowledgement. And that's not our fault, you know, that we want it. Now, some people like Tom have the solution where, oh, well, maybe the creator should just opt out of awards. There's a checkbox for that. But, you know, you don't necessarily have to opt out of an award. You shouldn't have to opt out of an award if you feel like you did a good job on something, you know? And maybe, sure, some creators are sliding in their A-rated submissions that get changed later, and that takes the award away from somebody who made, like, a student film or something worked really hard on, and it bumps them down the list, you know? But is it always their fault? Are they always maliciously sending these submissions through as M-rated instead of A-rated? Well, no, actually. There was an incident that happened in May, and I'm mostly at fault for it. I wrote a review on a submission uh, called Torque Out 2. And it's rated M. And justly so. At one point, it was actually changed to be rated A. And when it first came out, I had the response of, Tom, I want Peabot's level 2 status revoked because he messed up. But the, And I'm not going to play the content because it's clearly, like, fetish shit, you know? But it's not A-rated. And the problem is, it should be. You see, A-rated content is automatically filtered out. But when you judge a submission to be A-rated, you'd think, oh, well, if I just put in the bubbles, it'll, it'll work itself out. It should be A-rated. But the thing is, you have to lie to get a submission to be A-rated. This submission is M-rated. Here's the creator themselves showing the bubbles they ticked. There's not lots of nudity. Sure, it's fetishy, but it's fully clothed. It's not lots of nudity. The system decided it should be M. And a mod had to forcibly change it to A, which is lying about the content. And then it got changed back by Tom because it's not. It's not rated A. It's, it belongs in the M category. But it shouldn't. We almost scared this person off on the website because I wrote a review for the submission. I wrote a review that was just like... And it got deleted now. I deleted it now. Because it brought so much hate to the creator that they'd almost scared them off the website. People got mean, and I'm sorry that I started that. That's one of my bad. But I said, blam this piece of shit. This is disgusting. I hate it. And it's because it's fetish shit that I'm not into. I think it looks bad, and I don't think the content or the quality is worth it. I would delete it. I'd blam it. But, you know, that's my opinion. 
if it ended up in the A-rated category and never went to dailies, I would have never seen it on the front page. It would never have, like, offended me so. I'd never be curious to click on it. It would be in its own content realm with people who are expecting it and want that stuff. But the way that they're writing their, their content out in the rating system, the only way to get an A rating is by ticking the lots bubble when you submit on Newgrounds. Here's a submission for movies. All of it's ticked. Violence, explicit audio, explicit text, adult themes. It's all ticked on lots. Nudity on some, it's rated M. The only way to change it to A is by ticking lots. It's the only way. But that's not the only not safe for work content that exists. You should be able to leave it on some. What I suggest, and this is the part that I say, this is the fault of the website, the fault of the system. We need a checkbox. And this was something that I want to credit the creator who we nearly clicked off the website. This is partially their idea. And I was like, oh, that's, that's fantastic. You're right. This is a great idea. We should have a checkbox that just says, hey, this is intended to be not safe for work content. This is intended for, for adults. No one under the age of 18 should see this content. It should not be presented to them. Now, I don't hate A-rated content. I free and love it. If you check my Twitter, uh, don't, but my Twitter likes, it's very clear. I like A-rated content. Sometimes I make A-rated content. I work with their picks on sometimes and release like straight up hentai. I was a judge for the Newgrounds treasure hunt this year. And the thing that I made win was a porn game. Because it was so exceptional of a game. I have no bias against it. Which is why I feel like I have to speak out when I think A content is misplaced. I have a lot of Not Safe for Work artist friends, and you'll see in their Twitter bios, and their Newgrounds bios, it'll say 18+, plus minors, DNI, do not interact. Hell, their Pixon has a Safe for Work alt, because they don't want their fans to get crossed over. There are people who like the art, but not necessarily want the porn. Or people who like the art, but are too young for the porn. And they keep those accounts separate because they genuinely don't want kids to see it. So it's the fault of the website here that there's no option that just tick not safe for work and it should automatically overwrite the rating to be A. It's a simple solution and it'll cover a lot of bases. But, you know, A-rated content slipping by, it's not entirely the fault of the system. We have thirst traps and low effort work by popular creators. And that is the fault of the community, of you guys. Now, Tom suggested this in the thread where I went back and forth with the creator of Twerked Up 2. And he suggested we remove the daily awards, which I thought was ludicrous because the daily rewards make Newgrounds special. And he also said something about removing ratings. And of course he's gone back on that, the idea that you would remove ratings from Newgrounds makes everything about the site go away. We have a rating system to tell us how good we're doing or like how good others feel we're doing. It lets us show progress. We should be able to see ourselves improving through the rating system. We have tiers, 11 different buttons we can click for the system. It's not a like or a dislike. It's a goddamn 0 0.5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, everything in between. You know, it shouldn't be treated as a like or a dislike. You shouldn't be saying, hey, I like this creation, and so I'm giving it five stars automatically. Here's a creation that I particularly like. It's a good one. <laughs> it's short. It's eerie. It's got good sound design. I like it. I gave it a three. Because I like it. But everybody else in the reviews feel like they got to give it like a five to say something nice about it. It's almost like the stigma that if you rate something lower than five, you have to justify it. You have to say what's wrong, what can be improved. And I hate that. That's stupid. A goddamn five means it's goddamn amazing. You see, before we had this beautiful slider by Ivan Almighty, which I love, it shows every mood that you can reflect yourself. You could look in a mirror and see what your face is when watching videos and just rate based on that. It's beautiful. I, I love that Ivan made this. But the old rating system had something unique that I also loved. You see, we used to have a system where Pico, when you hovered over the different values, he would have a little dialogue bubble that told you how to rate. He had a little dialogue bubble where Pico literally says 
how he feels about a submission when you click on each one. He would literally say things like, blam this piece of crap. That's a zero. Blam it. Get rid of it. That means to delete it from the website. It's something special that only Newgrounds does. You have to earn your content staying on the website. If it has an average rating below a two, it's going to get kicked off the website. If you rate anything below a two, if you give it a one, a 0.5, a 1.5, or a zero, you're saying delete it. Some are saying delete it more. Zero means get it off my website. This is spam. This is crap. It's, it's a waste of space. It's a waste of the megabytes stored on the server. Point five, you're saying, no, this is garbage. But it's not as bad. One, you're saying this is crap, but I can see there's effort in it. You know, they tried. You know, maybe this is the madness tests. It, you still don't think it should be saved on the website, but you don't want them to go like... Oh, I'm tired for existing. This is so bad. You know? You you, you know, just... You, you don't want to do that to them. A zero and a one are vastly different. One saying, get it off the website, and one saying, this is bad. The difference is, one, you find offensive to yourself. You're just like, this is terrible. Get it out. And the other one, you're just saying, this is bad. Two, you're saying, all right, you know, it's nothing too new or interesting, but this deserves to stay on the website. You rate a two, you're saying this belongs here. Okay? That's what you're saying. Three, this is not bad. In fact, I like it. Pico, in fact, I like it. It's not bad. This is pretty good. A three is the average. If you take the average of zero to five, you know, and all the point fives in between, generally most submissions should be around three, three point five if they're pretty good. You should be rating things at three a lot more often because that's middle of the road. Not everything that's uploaded to the website is utter crap, though a lot is. And not everything that's uploaded to the website is exceptional beyond belief. I might go to the top 50 and say, you know, Trilby Dogtooth by Harry Partridge. It's phenomenal. I'm giving that, giving that five stars. That one, mm, it's original content. It's so good. It's not on the top 50 anymore. I gave it five stars. A lot of people did. You know what is on top 50? Jeff talks to little Pico from a Twitter space recording. It's pretty funny. Don't get me wrong. But does it deserve a 4.8? No, not really. It's because the creators who made it are so popular. And it's not their fault either. It's just saying, well, if a massive amount of people see it, they're going to get a lot of ratings. And a lot of people feel obligated to give fives if they like something. Because why would they give any less? And so it's just a byproduct that you get all of these five stars reviews. And, you know, sometimes people get like to give fives and zeros as a joke. But more people than not are writing genuinely, you know, five stars. No reason to justify it. Now, there's a couple solutions to this. Besides rating lower. No, I'm wrong. Yeah, you know, I thought about it for three seconds. No, it's, yeah, no, that's not a, that's not a solution. Uh, rate, li rate things lower. You know, it's not Peabot's goddamn fault. You all gave Lil Pico five stars. I think it was pretty funny. It was pretty good. I gave it a three because I liked it. You know, I'm not in love with it, but I liked it. It's pretty good. Four. Aw, oh, snap. This flash doesn't apply anymore. Flash is dead. But this flash, except on Newgrounds, you know, because Ruffle. But this flash, this is exceptional. This is good work. This is solid. This is a four. And then five, all my five R belong to this. Now, that's referring to, you know, reputation points and blah, blah, blah. But basically, you're saying this is the top tier. This is the pinnacle. This is your best work. You're doing it. Now, I'm not saying it's exclusively best work is in one piece of work. You're not going across all of Harry Partridge's stuff and saying, oh, well, only one can be five because nothing else can peak it as far. And I don't want to rate these two excellent animations at the same tier if one is slightly better than the other. No, you can give multiple things fives. But does everything that Harry made deserve a five? Does everything that Phantom Arcade made, does everything that I made deserve a five? Should I be looking at my submissions and should I be seeing you know, 4.7, 4.7, 4.4, just across the board on everything I do regardless? Well, no, it, it makes me feel stagnant as an artist. Am I growing? Do people like it? You can look at anything on the art portal 
And you can see the average rating across the board is 4.0s and higher. It's very rare for me to see threes or twos. And that's when I see some real crap. And the fact that we're rating everything five is lifting everything up, even the bad stuff. And it's also bringing stuff down. Not only are people really like indicative of how they feel by rating five and saying, I like this, five. They're also saying, I hate this with zero without acknowledging the technical skill behind the work just because you don't like it. For example, if you don't like a cartoon like Punch Punch Forever, that's on you. You know, it's not your humor or you don't like it or you have something personal against Speedo. Whatever the reason, you don't like it, you give it a zero. But you shouldn't, because on a technical level, you should be able to at least appreciate the skill, the quality, and the look of the animation, its duration. You should be able to acknowledge something about it that says, I don't want to bland this. Because when you're saying zero, you're saying, get it off the website. Delete this. It's bad. Surely, you don't feel that way. Maybe you feel, you know, this isn't for me. I don't like this. Or even like, Ugh, I hate Japanese you know, I want it dubbed in English. Zero stars. Well, at least acknowledge, you know, that it doesn't deserve to be deleted. Give it a two. At least say, this deserves to be on the website, even if I don't like it. You know, it's the same deal as giving fives. People are too willing to give fives and zeros and write those reviews. Now, why do we see that as all of the reviews? Why are most reviews fives and zeros? You know, it's there's a dichotomy, and there shouldn't be. Again, we have 11 levels. But all of the reviews seem to be like fours, fives, zeros, and ones. Why is there nothing in the middle? Now, this is the part where I'm going to read chat, and I'm just going to see if anybody actually knows the right answer. Yeah, let's just be quiet for like, just count it out, you know? Take a breath. I'll take a sip of water. I'll wait. Uh, the dichotomy. Why do we see re people write reviews that are always five or always zero? That's the question. I'll take another sip. Lux luxury of mine. Just a little luxury. Anybody know the right answer? Mm. Oh, that's a good one. Well, you see, the answer is we don't want to offend anyone or we want to really offend someone. We're afraid that if we rate something lower than five, we have to justify what's wrong with it rather than say three stars. This is what I like about it. We need to normalize submitting reviews, not just rating things lower, but submitting reviews that are things like three, saying why you like something, or maybe what you don't like in something. Writing reviews is a big solution. You know? If you like something, you shouldn't have to defend, no, no, I, I really like it. I didn't give it a five, but I, I swear, oh, okay, I'll give you the five. You know, everybody's getting bullied in their own heads because they're thinking too much about it. It's just a condition that we have from social media, from other apps having stuff like likes, you know, or dislikes. We don't even show dislikes on YouTube anymore. It's just, we're insecure. We need to be able to rate other content lower. Otherwise, there's going to be no diversity. Everything's going to be leaning up at fours, you know? And the top 50 is just ruined because of it. The top 50 on the website, the top 50 submissions have changed drastically in the last three years. 50% of the submissions that are currently in the top 50 have been submitted in the last three years. Now, does that mean that we're getting better overall? Well, maybe. I mean, you know, tools are more accessible. The, the internet is, you know, just growing exponentially. Information is being passed around. Communities are being formed on Discord. We're teaching each other skills. Yeah, sure, we're getting better. But are we, are we really getting so much better that half of everything on the website that's good 
was made in the last three years? Think about it. 50%. I sound like my goddamn pastor when I was a kid with the way I'm like phrasing this. It's just because I'm in utter disbelief. 50% of the highest scoring submissions have been replaced in the last three years. I mean, some stuff. Yeah, sure. Like the Madness trailer. That was incredible. Folkware. It's a really great collab. And, you know, collabs are another subject where, you know, it's got a lot of artists behind it. And we always like to rate five ourselves, you know. We always want to five stars ourselves. So we expect those to go a little bit higher because everybody involved is giving it a five. Uh, spoiler, I don't give everything I make a five. And I get shamed for it by my friends, which is ludicrous. But, you know, I got to stick by what I say. I say rate stuff lower. Everything in the top 50, you know? It's just... <laughs> I have no words for that. How, how? You know? Is everything so incredible? Hell, the Daily Firsts, half the time, they have 4.7s out of nowhere. This, I thought it was great. They did a good job. That's a four. A lot of people involved. They have a 4.7. To get into the top 50, you need a 4.8. Is this in the top 50 submissions of all time? Well, I don't know. I can't even think of 50 submissions on the website just like on a hand, but this isn't unusual for Daily First. This isn't just something that happened for the Summer Festival. Almost every Daily First has at least a 4.5. That's just crazy high. You know, how are we supposed to judge things and see our own improvement or compare other works on the site when everything is between a 4.4 and a 4.7? You know, there's no diversity in it. There's no critique. And that's not saying everyone's doing this, but a vast majority, hundreds of thousands of users on the website, vast majority are doing this. Yeah. They're rating things five, they're rating things zero. They're saying delete this, even though they're not acknowledging a technical skill. We have to be able to read stuff, and I don't mean... Everybody needs to rate stuff the same way. You know, I think the Tank Man's Faces is a great way to show how you feel about something. I think uh, Pico's rating system is pretty good. It tells you what to do. We don't have to all rate objectively. But we should start learning to rate things lower. And yeah, we all have biases towards things we like or things we dislike. And I have a bias too. I'd say I have about a half a star bias. I'm generally, when I when I rate stuff, I generally am close to what I feel like they deserve the average rating score to be. And sometimes I'm right. Really popular stuff, I tend to be a little bit lower. Really unpopular stuff, I tend to be a little bit higher. But generally, I try and aim for what I think the average score should be. This is what I think it's worth for its work, its skill, the time, uh, the actual presentation, what it is. This is the average I think it's worth. With about a half point, you know, leaning either up or down depending on my biases and that's the thing about biases is i had a friend bring this up they're like well you know i can't not give a five to my friend it's like well no of course not you can't give your friend less than a five what do you want to do stab him in the heart well goddamn no it, just because you're not giving a five doesn't mean you don't like it in fact I have a story about a friend. I have been rating all content, my own content. I give myself threes relentlessly because I don't think that the, they deserve much, you know? I'll... T I'm trying to find a good example. Yeah, here's a short film I did in school. I get, oh, gosh. No, that's that's too high. That's a four. We did a good job. We didn't do that good of a job. But that's the half a star bias. You know? I feel like it's worth a four, but I, I remember working hard on it. I gave it a half a star bias. You know? Over here, here's a little jam submission I did. Got about a half a star bias. I think it's about a 3.5, maybe a three. Half a star bias. You know? I rate myself lower, too. You know? We should learn to rate ourselves lower and our friends lower. You don't want to offend your friend, but here's the thing. 
you don't understand how powerful it is to praise your friends when they feel like they don't deserve it. All right, here's an example. My friend Doggle. Doggle on the website. He's been getting better. He likes to dabble in voice acting and, and arts and 3D. And this is a submission of his that he made for uh, our friend's album. This is the album cover. And, you know, he breaks it down. He's like, here's what I did. He's like, you know, he did a pretty good job. It's about three and a half, you know? And I'd say maybe I gave him a half a star bias plus, you know, because he's my friend. Maybe it deserves a three. Three, three and a half. He did a pretty good job with this one. Well, then he also came out with this. And I was like, all right, this is pretty solid work. This is trippy. This is cool. I like this. But he'd always ask me, he's like, why don't you give me a five? You know, when I tell him about it or when I write reviews, he's like, Brian never gives fives. He just never gives fives. It's not true. I give a shit ton of fives because I love a lot of the content on the website. Four, five, three and a half, five, four, four. Sometimes I hide reviews. I don't like to rate fan art. It's weird. If somebody does fan art for me, I don't want them to think, oh, critically about it. I just want to write something appreciative and then I hide the review. It's inoffensive. Sometimes I hide reviews on rated five submissions. I'll review something that Bacon did, who's my friend, and I'll write something absolutely, like, nothing to do with the art piece. I just want to write a joke or something. And even though I wrote, and it deserves five stars, I'll hide the score because my review is not reflecting my score. My review is totally separate. I just wanted to comment on it. And that's why I think hiding reviews is a valid option, especially with friends or fan art. But if you are public about your ratings with your friends, you know, you want to see them do better. You got to be real with them. It's like, you can do better. I know you can do better. And then one day, Doggle dropped this submission. Stranger Things fan art, final countdown, done in Blender. Is it my wallpaper right now? No, it's Futaba. But it's in the cycle. He's in the cycle. I saved this. I put it as my wallpaper. I gave it five stars. I told him, dude, nice job. Very smooth, artsy rendering. It's a great use of Blender. And, you know, he always criticized me that I rate things too low. You know, he'd always say, you know, you never get five stars, blah, blah. And then on Discord, he just messaged me. That was his response. He didn't respond on Newgrounds. He just says, it makes sense. You know, I get it. It's because my five stars for him had an enormous value. He get five stars all the time from our Earth friends. Line Thickness, Hail PC, they'll send him reviews. They'll send five stars and write a nice comment. And sure, they like it. But their five stars is pretty much worthless because they give it all the time. And I'm not holding it back on purpose for that effect. But because I rate him objectively with a little bias, when the five star happened, he was so happy. It made his entire day. We just went on talking about it. And he was telling me, you know, I got to rate things lower. It is because the feeling is so good. You feel so validated. You did a good job. And that review stands out. He's got a 4.7 on this. But he's also got a 4.7 on this. And he's got a 4.7 on this. But I think this he did so exceptional that that 4.7 is absolutely deserved. And I give it a 5. And it meant so much to him. Your friends will really appreciate you in the long run just being honest, you know? Write what you actually feel or score how you actually feel. Don't just slap a five because they're your friend. They'll appreciate it. Maybe not at first. They're not going to believe you. But eventually, if they're willing to improve or they work hard and they, they do the thing that they love because they love doing it, eventually you're just going to give them a five anyway. It's going to happen. You know, if they care even a little, it's going to happen. And that's not to say that four doesn't mean you like it. Four, of course, means you like it. You think it's great. But five means you killed this one. It's absolutely phenomenal. It's perfect despite its flaws. Even with its flaws, this is perfect. You know, that's saying, I love this. And the more often that you give out an I love this of that degree, the less it means. The same goes with blaming. The more often you give a zero, the less it means. If you give things over the entire course, you give ones and twos and threes and fours and fives, about equal or proportionate variety just by objectively observing this content on the website. Not only is it going to improve the culture of the website, 
the ratings are going to become more diverse, and your friends, they're going to appreciate it. They're not all going to appreciate it, and they're not all going to appreciate it quickly, but eventually they might get it. And hopefully I'm convincing you here that, you know, we need to normalize positive reviews that aren't five stars because it'll increase the value of the five stars we do give. Now, if anyone's open to any questions, you can feel free to chime in. Um, that's a majority of my tirade. But in summary, you know, Pbot's not at fault here. Pbot is a calculator. It's you. And, and I mean that lovingly. It's, it's just, it is you guys. It's me too. I'm not perfect. I have biases. We all do. But we can still rate objectively with our biases. Just think your bias is a little less valuable. Maybe it's just worth half a star or one star. You think it's worth a three, but it's your friend and you like them? Maybe just a half a star more. Give it a 3.5. Because that's still saying, according to Pico, hey, this is pretty good. I like this. And if you're giving it a two, you're saying, this deserves to be on the website. Even if you don't like something, you can acknowledge and give merit to the technical skill behind it. Even if it's not the, and I say technical skill, and I'm not trying to lord it like, oh, the technical proficiency of I've been to 12 major art classes and I do life drawing every day. You're saying is like the technical skill, I see that what they're doing, I see they're trying, and I see they're gonna get better. This is two, this, it's worth being on the website. This should, I save this, this will be here. And then stuff like one and zero, you're saying, all right, delete it. One, you're saying it's not ready yet, you're not there improve. And then when they finally are ready and it doesn't get deleted off the website, if they keep trying, if they're not somebody who gives up, if they keep trying, they'll feel really satisfied being like, all right, I finally made it. My little crappy cartoon is good enough. Now I can get even better. Now I have like a baseline. This is where I can start to improve. Or you give it a zero if it's absolutely crap and spam and you're just doing your duty to protect the portal. You know, you're saving the megabytes, you're saving the server. <laughs> that Tom has to pay for with his Castle Crasher royalties. A zero is you doing your duty. A zero is an I don't like Sir Palo, Spooky Mode sucks. You know? You can at least acknowledge it's pretty good. <laughs> we have uh, one comment here. Not a question, but a comment, and I think it might be something you agree with. Yeah, sure. Um, I think half of the high-ranking classics being made uh, in the past three years is a consequence of Newgrounds suddenly being put back on the map. My assumption is that most new users don't explore the site beyond the popular users they already already know, so a lot of the older stuff falls by the wayside in lieu of all the new stuff that gets more attention on social media. Absolutely. And that's just that's not the fault of the popular creator, but it's the fact that these creators are popular, that they're driving in users. That's good, but it also doesn't mean like everything they do is perfect. Because they're coming in with that five star mentality of like, I like this. Why would I give it less than five? And it's not the fault of the creators. Like, there's been such an influx of users in the last couple of years that we crossed 100,000 fans for the first time. And then their Pixon's already on their way uh, to 500,000, you know? We got half yeah. a million. It's like, the amount is increasing, you know? So yeah, I, I agree with them. It's not top it's not the fault them. of these top creators, but it's it's a problem of it where you have to just go sometimes, you know, this one's okay, you know? I like this creator. This is pretty good. But me saying this is pretty good, that's a three. You know, I'm not saying this is pretty good, five. I'm saying this is amazing, five. This is pretty good, three. Here's a submission that I really like. This is by uh, some guys um, called Jersey House Studio. It's just a bunch of artists uh, who don't have new grounds who made a collective. And they made this cute little cartoon about worms. I'm like, I like this. But it has, like, no views because they don't have any other social media presence. And I've promoted this so many times to my friends. I just want to give it a watch here. Honey, I'm home. What's up, Worm Nation? Wormy just got home, and we're going to try out this is so oh, cute. Superfoods stop, challenge. Stop, stop. I don't want to be in this. Oh, it's the middle right, of the week. Right, yeah, sure, but honey, it's got personality. Try this. Okay, Some okay, voice talent. It? Check it out. It's pretty Plastic. cool. What? It's what everyone's talking about. What's that on top? Just a bit of chicken shit for that. Mm. Oh, yummy. Kind of, kind of chewy. 
Mm-hmm. Sort of. At the very least, chemically? you can appreciate the technical <laughs> skill. Oh, no, Maybe you think not. it's good. It's disgusting. Somewhere between two, no, it's, three and a half. It's okay. <laughs> oh, honey, come here. You're just at work all the time, worried about the dying soil around us. So I thought I'd make something new today, and it tastes like soap. <laughs> oh, don't worry, babe. Well, let's be fair. Even just soap. dead leaves are good enough for me. Okay, I'll remember that. Oh, oh it's coming out. Oh. oh! Oh, push, honey! Get it out! You can do it! Yes! Go, go, go! It's all yours! Yes! yes. Yeah, that's right. This is new grounds. <laughs> mm, let me lick that. This tastes like vanilla. This is pretty good. Jersey. Yeah. Wow. But they uh, they don't have any social media presence, so 150 views. Cool, guys. I think it deserves about 3.5, and I'm pretty close to the average of what 80 people think. You know? Yeah. And I wrote a review to affirm that, yeah, I like this, and I'm giving a 3.5. I think I think views and likes are, like, as you would uh, you obviously agree, that are, it's just, like, you know, it's, it's, it's just chasing the dragon. You know, it's very random. You don't, you know, you don't really know what's going to... You know, unless you, like, like, like you said, already have a presence where you can guarantee that, like, a percentage of your viewer base is going to look at it uh, guaranteed, you know. It's kind of hard to, mm -hmm. you know, that's why you shouldn't judge your work that way. But I think what makes Newground special and why I do, um, uh, I, I, I... Oh, oh hold up. I, everything I, you said for the last hour. I, I see two really good questions. Uh, one oh, from sure. It's Blue Banana. How do you make sure that the critique that you give in a review, something off anatomy or composition, is valid on a submission that can be improved on? That's up to your own technical skill. Like, if you're aware of those things, if that's something that you studied or you see in yourself, your own experience, it's valid. It, but, you know, you can't be afraid to be wrong because maybe you'll learn something, you know? Maybe you'll look back and go, oh, well, I wasn't totally right with this review. I, I see better now. But maybe it gave that information to somebody else and the way they interpreted it, it did help them improve in the end. You know, you never know what it's going to do. If they don't think it's going to help them improve, if they think you're wrong, they can just ignore it. Or Like a YouTube about, comment. <laughs> yeah, or, or the good thing about you, about, about critique, uh, whether it be quote-unquote right or wrong, is that it encourages the person to at least, like, steel man their own their own art piece for a second, or, like... Yeah, just, like, own, look at it and think about own, it. Yeah, be their own. Like, cause then even be if like, do own, I deserve a five? Yeah. It's like, what would I give myself if it wasn't me? Yeah. Also, this ties into... Uh, Bellieves Fox. Uh, their question is, how should reviews be accurately given if the reviewer is limited in certain areas of knowledge, like audio production? That's exactly me. I don't know shit about music or audio. I can tell you when a podcast is edited right, but beyond that shit, the audio portal is mostly me unaware giving threes, fours, and fives. If I think it's really, like, my bias is a little bit higher because I'm less informed, I'm less knowledgeable. But the more you know about your own craft, the more that you can appreciate the subtleties and say, this is more of a 3.5, or this is a 4.5, or this is a 2.5, it's not quite a 3 yet. But you're also a consumer still at the end of the day, you're, you're a consumer of the art. Like, it's like, if it's not, if you don't like it, you don't like it. Like, it doesn't, you don't have to, like, your your opinion doesn't have to be, like... Like, if you're trying to die in a hill, yeah, you better have something to back up, back it up. But, like, if you're just like, man, I didn't like that. Like, that's f totally valid. There's nothing, you're not like, you know. Mm -hmm. I think it's also fine to be like, I, I, it was fine, I guess. Like, I, 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 there's there's sometimes I'll give threes where I'm just like, I it was all right, you know. Yeah, no, Micro Bihan is asking, is it valid to rate animation in Genuine 5 Baseball? Blah, blah, blah. Whatever your reason, you can absolutely rate fives. I'm not saying not to rate fives. Everybody's rating system's a little bit different. Mine's a little bit lower than most, but I think everybody in general should relate lower because everybody's leaning a little bit too high and not touching the rest of the scale. Uh, your bias might say, yeah. I mean, I could see technically this is like a four, but you're like, there she is. This is kind of legendary. It's, it was so good for its time. It's like, yeah, I'll bump that up. Maybe a 4.5, maybe a five. You know, maybe your bias is a little stronger than mine. Instead of half a star, it's a full star. Just don't let your bias overwhelm your objective rating. Don't, like, look at something and go, you know, I think it's a three. But, you know, it's got history, so it's Ed's world. I'll give it a five. There was a call to action that Tom Fulp made a couple of years back where he said, hey, there's a bunch of new users on site. And, uh, you know, maybe, uh, and he was pointing out the top 50. He said, maybe we should all go back and look at some of these top 50 and uh, some of these older cartoons and redo our ratings. Because back then, when I first joined the site, there was still a submission 
in place where when you submitted a rating, it was stuck and you can't change it. You couldn't change your ratings until like 2018. Mm. Like at all. And then yeah. when he released that update, he was like, maybe we could go back and re-review some old stuff. Because a lot of stuff's leaning pretty high in the top 50. Like, a lot of Ed's World's up there. And it's like, we love it, but Spares isn't that good, objectively. Is it a 4.8? Ugh. No. Because also, if you're saying that is a 4.8, when Ed got super good and did Hammer and Fail, and that shit was dope, that also got like a 4.7. And you're saying Spares is better just because of more history? Mm, that's got to hurt. Imagine being told that thing you made seven years prior is better even though you know it's objectively worse. Ugh, it's not a good feeling. Uh, also, Chroma, I'm not accepting art critique during the panel because the panel's short, but uh, feel free to send me stuff on Discord or uh, wherever, Twitter. You know, uh, are there any other questions that you picked out that you like? So um, you know, there weren't, there weren't a whole lot of questions. Um, a lot of it was just con kind of commentary. Um, and the only main one that I felt was worth mentioning was the not saying all the uh, co commentary is not worth it, but the the one that I read out that mentioned, you know, off off site influences, I think is important to also like you know keep in mind. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I, I, I fully second, you know, what you were saying is, you know, it's a rating system. It's not a like on Twitter or a like on Instagram. It's like a, like, it's, it's there for a reason. Um, so I, I totally, like, like, I use my favorite, my favorites thing as a like. That's like, if I, if I want to look at this later. Yeah, that, that's exactly that's what it I, is. That's how I like things on social media. I don't just like every post i see i like posts that i want to look at later or well like, you'll also I you'll, was really good you'll notice this on newgrounds on my profile i don't have a tab that says you know latest favorite art mm. i have latest favorite movies latest favorite games latest, latest favorite audio i don't have a latest favorite art because i feel like that list would be so overwhelmingly big i'd feel yeah. bad if i left anything out so i just never favorite art mm -hmm. ever but that's what it's for Hell, playlists have been improved, and now that's even better. And you can use that shit to keep track of what you really like. You know, the score isn't the same as favorites. And I'm glad we have different systems for it. We just need to treat them differently. You know, we have to recognize that there's 11 levels. 0, 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3. All the way up. I'm not going to count it. That's boring. But you get the idea. You know, try and think a little bit objectively, despite your bias. And then, you know, apply your bias. It's like a half star toward, like, I like this. Uh, this is my jam. Half star up, maybe a full star up. Or, you know, I don't like this, but I can appreciate it technically. Objectively, I'd give it a three, but I, I don't like this. I don't want to send that signal. Two and a half, you know, two. Mm. It shouldn't be deleted from the website. Give it a two. Yeah, I feel like also that's, I think, the the knowledge that, oh, if this gets rated too low, like, it could get kicked off the site. Yeah, you know, I don't want that to happen. You know, I feel like that. I feel like a lot of people, you know, I think rightfully are like, oh, geez, like that's like, you know, it, it, do I want to give this thing the potential guillotine or even give it the chance of getting it? Mm -hmm. You know, so that's probably why people rate high too. Is like, hey, like I like this a lot. I don't want it to risk. You know, because you know, especially. Uh, well, there's also corrective oh, voting. Like, for example, you'll see something that's rated lower than you think it should be. You'll see the average score, and you'll go, I think it should be higher than a 3.5, so I'm going to give it a 5, so my vote's worth more. Stop it. Mm -hmm. You're the problem. Mm -hmm. No. What are you doing? You can't correct voting like that. You're worth nothing. You're one vote. Just rate it ac The thing is, if you all start rating accurately, it'll solve itself. You know, yeah. we'll lean towards the better average overall. We just got to be a little bit more honest. We don't go do corrective rating. We don't say, all right... I like spooky month, but this is a little high. Maybe if I give a zero, that'll help lower it. People do, people do that. It's stupid. Yeah. It's yeah, goddamn stupid. Sure. Just go, oh, I'll give it a zero because the rating's too high. I need to lower it. You're not, like, who who are you helping? Just just give it a four or 4.5. It'll get lower. You know, if it's got a 4.7, it'll get lower no matter what you give it if it's not a five. Also, uh, Forge Frog says, do you think yeah, Rotten Tomato style, you know, separate critic and audience rank? No, because 
that's dumb. I cr critics. I mean, anybody can be a critic to an extent, and everybody's in the audience. Separating them just sounds like a whole extra list of confusion, and it's probably the kind of shit that makes Tom think about deleting the system. Uh, no, I don't think that's a good idea, especially because a lot of times critics aren't people who make stuff, and sometimes the people I respect the most or opinion of is other people who make stuff. You know, I want to hear what they think, but they might not think of themselves as critics because they just make stuff. And then people who think they are critics only consume and can't appreciate beyond that level, like what what goes behind each cartoon or game. You know, it's like you don't have to be a game developer to be a game critic. And so I think separating those on Newgrounds is just poo-poo. Poo Bad idea. Uh, any last-minute questions, anybody? Please feel free to hop into panelist questions or on YouTube. I'm watching both chats. Um, you know, feel free. Mm -hmm. Oh, and also, uh, I, I admit that I have my own advantage. Uh, creators who have more fans than other people. Like, for example, I, I have like 6,000 fans. That's within, like, the top 400, 500 creators on the website. Um, and if you don't count, like, A-rated authors, adult authors, it's probably around top 200. And so I'm at an advantage that a lot of people don't have is that a lot of people will just see my stuff, and I'll tend to get fours. It's hard for me not to get less than a four, no matter what I post, which is mm. kind of crazy to me, you know? Because how, how do I know I'm doing good? Is Nobody's rating me objectively anymore. But it also makes me feel bad. I feel conditioned to expect a four. Because if I don't get it, I feel, oh, what I do wrong? Because it's so prevalent. We need to not only rate things lower, but we have to be prepared for that expectation to shift. We shouldn't all be trained to expect a four. Otherwise, we're going to always be disappointed. You know, we got to normalize these levels over time. Uh, what's your opinion on people who rate a zero on submissions but then slap it with a positive comment? I get confused. Um, I think that they're yeah. on mobile and they accidentally thumbed when scrolling. I, I have that so many times in, like, so to pics on. I have A-rated turned off, uh, and I do that sometimes, not only because we're streaming, but because uh, the only A-rated content I make is, like, their pics on stuff, and I get so many notifications that if I want to see notifications from people who made, who, for, for stuff that I exclusively made, I need to turn off A-rated. Otherwise, it's flooded with follows and reviews for one of their cartoons and half the time i see those reviews they'll like write a whole paragraph about why they love it and i see a zero star and i go ah they uh they were on their phone and they accidentally hit it while trying to scroll and didn't see should we especially be objective in rating uh on front page works like do you think front page works deserve a little more like criticism yeah so front page works are great because we have curated content on the site a person physically puts that because they're like all right this deserves to be seen more and that's great. Just because it's Seymour doesn't mean you have to think, oh, well, this is the pinnacle. This is the, the best, you know? Like, yeah. uh, Bacon's a great artist. He gets front-paged all the time. Same with Matt Lopes. But is every one of their submissions a five? No, I tend to give them a lot of fours because they're really solid. On a technical level, it's hard for them not to post a four. But that little difference between four, 4.5, and five, it still exists. In this system where we start lowering values and not all art submissions are getting an average of 4.7, your choice to do 4 or 4.5 or 5 will start to show a difference between their works and go, this one was really, really good. You're always good, but this one was especially good instead of them all being rated the same. Like, Bacon could look at it and go, you know, I spent uh, 12 hours on this one, got less views, got the same rating, but uh, this one, you know, had a girl with slightly less clothes, Shantae, is... You know, technically, it's a four. Yeah. Oh well, Zosi is good, but yeah, that too. Cute girls. I love I it, but you gotta you gotta restrain yourself. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Shantae's Bacon's original character. Yeah. No. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. He was born um, in the Way Forward office. Yeah. Uh, what are the worst animations of the animation portal, specifically the lowest rated ones? Uh, they got blamed. <laughs> yeah, they're gone. They're yeah, dead. they're gone. That's the beauty of Newgrounds. They're deleted I feel forever. Like, I, feel like it's, I feel like, you know, honestly, though, I, I actually like the blam system purely because if I made something so bad that, like, it sucks that bad, I'm happy it's gone. <laughs> I'm happy it's not sticking around. It's like, man, it's like, and then it requires me to get rid of it because it's like, it's like, man, if, like, if something is, like, a zero and it mm -hmm. just stays on the site, it's like, it's like stuff that's, like, like, just like bombed on youtube 
Like, that shit's still on the site. That's crazy. Uh, someone on YouTube mentioned dives, um, and I agree. Their work consistently gets crazy high ratings, uh, but, you know, some stuff is actually really good. You know? Uh, Be careful here, my friend. Well, no, it's okay. I have the filter on. <laughs> okay, I know. I'm just saying, even the mature stuff. Well, like, um, for example, this one. This was pretty good. I was like, it's pretty good. It's cute. It's short. I saw they love the Grimace's birth. It's more about the dialogue in this one. I was like, yeah, that's about a three. But then there's times that they do like an exceptionally good job. Like they'll do a fight scene and wrestling and a whole bunch of shit. And there's voice acting. And it's like, yeah, I'll give that a four, four, four and a half. But because they have so many fans, they have 150,000. They end up with daily first instantly, always, every time, exclusively. Never upload on the same day as dives. Don't do it. You won't get an award. And that's just not good. <laughs> You know, I love the the no follow for evil and the whole that whole list. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good. That's oh yeah, because I don't know what Evil Skater makes. This is freaking. Yeah. They don't post anything. Why would I follow them? I know they work know. on Friday Night oh, Funkin', but it. what do they do? I get it. No, I totally get yeah. it. I just get a funny screenshot of everyone else who's followed except. Yeah, like, I follow them. I, I, I like their it. stuff. It's just highly no, rated for no I reason. Totally get it. Yeah. I understand why. Um, overrated. All right. Um, any last minute thoughts, my friend? Yeah, I want to close this out with premiering uh, oh, right. a cartoon I worked on that just came out uh, an hour ago. And I worked with the Jersey House studio of folks, so give them some love. You know, it's about a three and a half. <laughs> See, I do it. But yeah, you should give them some love. Uh, you can find it on my page, uh, but you can also find it on theirs. And you should follow them because they make some really cute content. Uh, like the worms eating shit and uh, some other cool loops. Like this one called Traffic Jam. It's real cute. Love it. Great job. But yeah, I thought I'd just end it on a new cartoon. <laughs> Oye, Ricardo. ¿Quieres ir por unas chelas después de esto? Sobres. ¿Me das un ride? Ricardo, Ricardo. Oye, compa. Ay, ahí viene Juan. ¿Quién es Juan? Juan, el güey que trae paraguas como gorra. El otro día tenía un aire acondicionado amarrado en la cintura. Oh. Oye, Ricardo, ya por fin resolví nuestro problemita de calor. ¿Qué hiciste esta vez? ¿Un traje de hielo? ¿O una alberca de niños llena de limonada? Mejor. Me deshice del jefe de Chevron. <risa> ¿Mike Weird? A ver, a ver, a ver, ¿cómo que deshice? ¿Lo hice desaparecer? ¿Qué? Sí, Vito. Ay, por fin. <risa> Te chutaste a alguien. ¿Por qué, Juan? ¿Por qué? ¿No ves que su compañía lo estaba haciendo todo más caliente? La verdad es que era lo más fácil, pero... ¿Entonces qué? ¿Vamos por unas virongas o qué? Si tú manejas. ¿Por qué me lo dijiste? No quiero estar implicado en tus pinches crímenes. Ricardo. ¿Sabes qué pasa si me deportan a Sinaloa? ¿Lo sabes? Respira, tranquilo. Compa, mira. Cierra los ojos. ¿Qué? ¿Qué me vas a hacer? No más ciérralos. Deja de quejarte. Ok. Okay. I like the Dyson. Orale, que guapo. Okay. But yeah, that's been my time. Thanks for coming, guys. That I was hope awesome. You... That was very funny. I hope you like the the problem with Peabot. He doesn't have any problems at all. Maxine's the problem. <laughs> Maxine's a throwback. That's funny. Ah, uh, this is a great one. Have fun. Uh, enjoy the rest of uh, the panels today. They're going to be good. I'm especially... I'm going to hit the road in like 10 minutes, but I'm going to put this on in the background, and I'm going to be listening for like the Milk Bar Lads. They're going to have a panel. That sounds great. Hell yeah. I hope you all... come back on right after this. Yeah, I hope you all enjoy it. I'm, I'm actually going to the office right now because uh, Tom docks me in the news post. Um, but I'm going to the office, and I'm, I'm going there to punch Peabot, the statue. I'll let you know how it goes. That'd be a great video. You should, put, you should, you should video <laughs> beat the shit out of Peabot. Sure. <laughs> I'll curb stomp him. Yeah, curb stomp him. Bring him outside. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Bye.